Welcome to the lecture on multiplying and dividing real numbers. To begin with, we have two very basic rules for how to multiply or divide real numbers. You're going to look at the signs of the numbers, the positives and the negatives. If you're multiplying or dividing two numbers with the same sign, then the answer is going to be positive. So a positive times a positive stays positive, or a negative times a negative turns positive. If you want to multiply or divide two numbers with opposite signs, then the answer stays negative. So a positive times a negative is negative, and a negative times a positive is negative. One thing that I often do, especially if you have more than just two numbers that you're multiplying or dividing, is I count how many minus signs I see. If you see an even number of negatives, then that's going to turn positive. If you see an odd number of negatives, then your answer is going to stay negative. So let's try some examples out. Let's say I have negative 4 times negative 6. Since I have a negative times a negative, that's an even number of negatives, the answer is going to be positive. And then 4 times 6, we know, is 24. If I have negative 7 times 3, there's only one negative, so the answer stays negative, and 7 times 3 is 21. If I want negative 8 times negative 1 half, a negative times a negative becomes positive, and half of 8 is 4. And then negative 18 divided by 6, still there's only one negative in the entire problem, so the answer is going to stay negative, and 18 divided by 6 becomes 3. If I have negative 28 divided by negative 4, a negative divided by a negative becomes positive, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. This is a little different than when we add or subtract negatives. When you add two negative numbers, the answer stays negative. In this case, when you multiply or divide two negatives, the answer turns positive. So it's a little bit different rule. This next example has a little bit more order of operations involved. We have this great big fraction bar. So first we want to figure out what the whole number on the top turns into, and then we're going to figure out what the number on the bottom turns into, and then the last thing we will do is divide. So let's start on the top. Negative 12 times negative 5. That's two negatives being multiplied together. So two negatives turns positive, and then 12 times 5. If you don't know how to do that in your head, or without a calculator, you just do a little scratch work. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 carry 1 becomes 6. So 12 times 5 is 60. And in the denominator, here we are doing some subtraction. Remember that a minus minus becomes plus, so this is really 7 plus 5 in the denominator. And 7 plus 5 is just 12. So we have a single number in the top, a single number in the bottom. Now we get to reduce or divide here. 60 divided by 12 goes back to that 5. Remember, 12 times 5 was 60, so 60 divided by 12 gets you back to 5. Okay. The next example has a lot more of that order of operations in it as well. So let's start on the top. We have multiplication going on between this negative 13 and that negative 4. We have subtraction in the middle, and then a negative 8 times a negative 2. So in order of operations, multiplications here and here come first. And then the last thing we'll do is the subtraction between these. So let's take this negative 13 times this negative 4. Negative times negative becomes positive, and 13 times 4, you can do that with a little scratch work if you need to, that's just 52. So negative 13 times negative 4 is positive 52. Now if I go to this other multiplication, negative 8 times negative 2, a negative times a negative becomes positive, and 8 times 2 is 16. Then the last thing is there was a subtraction problem in between these two answers, so I need to do 52 minus 16. And if you do a little scratch work there, 52 minus 16, we need to borrow a 10. We get 12 minus 6 is 6, 4 minus 1 is 3, so this is going to be 36 on top. 
In the denominator, we have again a multiplication between the negative 10 and the 2, then we have a subtraction, and then we have another multiplication between the 4 and the negative 2. So we're going to do this negative 10 times this 2. 2 times 10 is 20, and I only have one negative, so the answer is going to stay negative. On the second multiplication here, you can do this a couple of different ways. To treat it like the problem I did above, I'm just going to take this 4 times this negative 2. And if I just look at those two numbers, there's a, a positive 4 here and a negative 2 here. So there's only one negative, so the answer is going to stay negative. And 4 times 2 is 8. So 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. However, there was this subtraction still in between. So if you do it this way, the way I took that 4 and I ignored the subtraction in between, if you just think of this as 4 times negative 2, you actually end up getting a double negative here. So if I change these to plus plus, negative 20 plus 8, remember our rules for addition, these are opposite signs. One of them's negative, one of them's positive. So you subtract 20 take away 8 would be 12. But because the 20 was larger and it was negative to begin with, the answer is negative. Okay? So we get 36 on top, negative 12 on the bottom, and then finally if we divide here to simplify this, 36 divided by 12, 12 goes in three times, and we only see one negative here. A positive divided by a negative stays negative. So our answer is negative 3. Next example two sets of parentheses, so we want to simplify what's in the parentheses first, and then we're going to multiply those two results together. So 8 plus 9 is 17. 4 minus 12, you can think of it like that, or remember you can change this to 4 plus negative 12, adding the opposite. Since these are opposite signs, you're subtracting. Just take the larger number minus the smaller number, 12 minus 4 is 8. However, since the 12 is the number that was negative and it was larger, this answer, or this 8, is going to be negative as well. So we get a 17 from here, and we get a negative 8 from here. So now the last thing we need to do here is multiply. So if we multiply, this is probably a little too big to do in your head, so you just do a little scratch work. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 more is 13, so this is going to be 136, and it was a positive times a negative, so the answer stays negative. All right, the next one. We have some stuff in parentheses here that needs to be simplified. Then we have multiplication by a negative 9. Then we have subtraction by a negative 2. So in order of operations, we do parentheses first negative 7 minus 4, or you can think of this as negative 7 plus negative 4. Since the 7 and the 4 are both subtract or both negatives, they both have a minus sign in front of them, they're same signs. So you actually are adding 7 and 4 to get 11. But because they were both negative to begin with, that 11 stays negative. So negative 7 minus 4 is negative 11. Now we have negative 11 times this negative 9, and then we need to subtract from it this negative 2. So you do your multiplication here first. Negative 11 times negative 9. We've got a negative times a negative, which turns positive, and 11 times 9 is just 99. Finally, we have minus that negative 2, so finally we're going to do this subtraction. You see a double negative right here, so I would change that to a plus plus. So this is really just 99 plus 2, which is 101. Okay. The next example, again, order of operations with these sign numbers. We see a big fraction. We want to simplify the top, simplify the bottom, and then divide. If we look at the top, we've got exponents, and exponents are going to come first here. So 3 squared, remember 3 squared means 3 times 3, so that's 9. 4 squared means 4 times 4, which is 16, and we want to subtract those two results. So 9 minus 16, or 9 plus a negative 16. 
Those are opposite signs. So we're going to subtract. 16 take away 9 is 7. But since the 16 was the one with the negative and it was the larger number, that 7 is going to stay negative. In the denominator, we have stuff in parentheses here, and that answer needs to get multiplied by 7. So we want to simplify this stuff first. Negative 8 plus 9. Those are opposite signs. So when we go to add, we're actually going to be subtracting. 9 take away 8 would be 1. And since the 9 is the larger number and it's positive, the 1 is going to be positive. So this part in parentheses is really just 1. And now we need to take that and multiply it by 7. 7 times 1 is going to be 7. So we get negative 7 on the top, positive 7 on the bottom. 7 divided by 7 goes to 1, and a negative divided by a positive stays negative. So this answer is just negative 1. For the last three remaining examples, we're just going to practice doing a little translation. So this first sentence says, the product of 4 and negative 7 added to negative 12. So we're going to sort of translate this into mathematical symbols first, and then we're going to simplify and figure out what the solution is. So the first thing you need to remember is what the word product means. Product means multiplication. And what are the two things we want to multiply? Look for that word and. That's going to separate the two things we're multiplying. We want to multiply 4 and negative 7. So 4 times negative 7. And then what are we going to do with that? We're going to add it to negative 12. Now you can do a plus negative 12 on the side like I did here, or you could even put the plus 12 in front of that 4 times negative 7. The order doesn't matter here because addition is commutative, which means you can add in either direction. So here's what this would translate into initially. Now to simplify it, because of order of operations, we want to do the multiplications first. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. <coughs> and now we're going to add to that negative 12. Since we're adding two numbers that are both negative, both the same sign, we're really adding the two numbers. 28 plus 12 more is going to be 40. And since both numbers were negative, the sum stays negative. So our answer is negative 40. On the next example, we see that word product again. We want to take the product of 3 and the difference between 3 and negative 7. So look for that word and. It's going to separate the two things we want to multiply. So we want to multiply 3 times stuff. And the stuff that we're multiplying is this difference. Difference means subtraction and you can subtract in exactly the order that the numbers come in. So we want the difference between 3 and negative 7. So that means 3 minus negative 7. And here you want to be a little bit careful. Remember, this was the product of 3 and all this stuff. So we want 3 times all of this difference. So you have to have parentheses in this problem, otherwise your final answer won't be correct. Now when we go to simplify, do the parentheses first. We have a double negative, so this minus minus becomes plus. 3 plus 7 is just 10, and 10 times that 3 gives me 30. The last example. Here we have the sum of negative 18 and negative 6 divided by the product of 2 and negative 4. So we have the sum of two things, negative 18 and negative 6. So there's my sum of negative 18 and negative 6. And then what are we going to do with that? We're going to divide it by, so I'm going to draw a great big division or fraction bar. And what are we dividing it by? The product of 2 and negative 4. So we're going to do a product, which means multiplication, of 2 and negative 4. You can use parentheses if you want. You can just use that little dot. It really doesn't matter how you write that product. So here's what this translates into. Now to simplify, let's start on the top. We have a sum of two numbers that are both negative. So we want to add 18 and 6. 
which is 24, and they're both negative, so that 24 is going to stay negative. In the denominator, we have a product. 2 times negative 4 is going to be negative 8. And then finally, when we simplify this quotient, this division, 24 divided by 8 is 3, and a negative divided by a negative, remember, turns positive. So our final answer is 3. This concludes our lecture on multiplying and dividing real numbers. Good luck.